Hey, it's all with your weekly reminders of what's going down in the world of Warcraft. Be sure to hit the like button, subscribe for more stuff, and let's get to the thing on the thumbnail. The Creation Catalyst. It opens this week, and I'll fill you in on how it works and what you need to do. There's a very soft requirement to unlock the Creation Catalyst. You need to have completed Chapter 4 of the 9.2 campaign. And that's it. Most of you will have unlocked the Catalyst without even knowing it, and just needed to wait until this week to actually use the thing. A quest should appear to direct you where you need to go. For newer players who don't happen to have Flying Unlocked, there is like a teleporter clicky thing that'll take you up to the Catalyst. The console itself will allow you to slot certain pieces of gear and with Cosmic Flux, transform these pieces into a predetermined class set. Most importantly, you can take the helmet, shoulders, chest, gloves, and leg pieces and use Cosmic Flux to turn those into tier set pieces, unlocking powerful bonuses. Let's get a little bit more specific. Not all gear can be used in the Creation Catalyst. Only armor pieces obtained during this season will work, that is, the stuff that you've been getting from raids in all difficulties, raided PvP gear, so conquest gear, and dungeon gear from mythic or higher difficulty. Also included, gear that drops from the world boss in Xerath Mortis, and gear purchased using Sandworn relics from Rafik over in Pilgrim's Grace. Accessories and weapons are not going to work with the Catalyst. That was kind of a lot of words, but the game will inform you pretty plain and clear. When using it, you can easily identify what does and doesn't work by how gear is highlighted in your inventory. You can click the plus button here to also pull down all of the eligible gear in your inventory and what's equipped on your character. When you transform gear, it'll switch to a predetermined piece, meaning the secondary stats are likely to change from its original form as shown here. Everything else from the original gear will be brought over to the new thing. That includes the item level, the upgrade levels if this was PvP or dungeon gear, PvP bonus levels for PvP gear, gem slots, and tertiary stats. It kind of goes without saying too, since you're converting this gear into your class set, you're going to get the transmog as well. And here are the costs. It starts at 600 Cosmic Flux to convert your bracers and cloaks, 800 for belts and boots. It goes up significantly for pieces that give tier set bonuses. Gloves and shoulders will cost 1200 to pop, while the chest, helmet, and leg slots will cost 1500 The Catalyst will be able to transform one item per week. This has a charge time, and one charge will be replenished each week. On the plus side, the Catalyst can accumulate multiple charges over time, however we don't know the maximum number of charges that can be held. Here's something important to point out. These charges are not based per character, so you're not going to have to like visit the Catalyst on each character to start the feature. And charges don't start building only after a character reaches level 60. These charges build up region-wide at the same time at resets for everybody. According to the blue post, alts or players who come along later in the season may be able to create an entire set if they have the flux for it. Which hints that if there is going to be a maximum number of charges, it's going to be no fewer than four. Hopefully you've been saving a number of high level pieces which you can turn into tier pieces like right away. The most likely strategy to adopt is to complete your two or four piece bonus if you haven't yet. If you don't have the right piece, consider buying a piece of sand worn gear at least to get you by for now. Depending on your spec, completing a set bonus will do a lot more for your performance than a little bit less item level. And don't forget to check your Great Vault. Check for gear candidates first before running to the Catalyst. We can't confirm this until it goes live, but there are strong indications that, depending on the item level of gear when it's plugged into the Creation Catalyst, the appearance will look different. Turning a low-level Mythic Dungeon piece of gear into your class sets should get you the Raid Finder Tint. Turning an item level 278 version of dungeon gear should get you the mythic tint. And now that we're through with that, let's break into song. Get quest for a renown and switch to Venther if you need. Then off to Xerath Mortis for the routine of the week. Grab up all the questies without Pogo Purge land. Open quest and slaughter every creature that you can. Once you're done, return to all your candled headed friends. Then off to farm for anima cause there is no f***ing end. Done. This week's PvP brawl is Gravity Labs, where flag carriers just kind of die, and I hide in a building, which is sort of like playing roulette with my life. Like, how many people are going to show up this time? Legion Time Walking returns complete with Transmog Vendor and a special week of Legion Mythic Plus. As a reminder, unlike regular Legion Time Walking, Keystone Dungeons in Legion are just like Keystone Dungeons in Shadowlands, where all your powers and abilities are retained. No idea what the affixes are going to be since this is the first time we return to the event, so cross your fingers. As for regular Mythic Plus World, the affixes are Tyrannical, Sanguine, and Storming. 
not gonna be my favorite, I don't think. Sanguine and storming means that for safety, I'm gonna have to move a lot more, but no doubt I'm gonna slip up here and there and get bounced back into a sanguine puddle. Yay. This week overall is going to be strange, I think. We're a week away from the big announcement of WoW's next expansion. I have little doubt that we'll see more micro failures as Blizzard attempts to keep what's coming under wraps, and I expect more than a few surprises. Still though, as news breaks and legitimate leaks surface, you'll see them covered here, so it'd be great if you were to subscribe to this channel and stay informed. Like the video too, because of course that can't hurt. In the meantime, I'll be having some fun throughout this week, sharing predictions and going back to remind you of the more fun and memorable fake leaks from this first season I did this sort of coverage. So join me as I do some of that live. Coffee with Soul usually happens Tuesday through Thursday, starting at 8.30 a.m. Pacific over on our Twitch channel. I hope to see you for the next thing. Until then, stay safe, stay healthy, and stay breezy.